I hinted at this at the hospital, but I, not from a very close around here. Did you, did you mention it to anyone? When I woke up from my coma, I mentioned some of my information it was falsified because the co the co I thought the cops were going to look into my information and know it's false. Um, but I, I tried to give them, give the cops a different name. I was so confused and out of it and worried. I said I was from a different dimension to a cop, and he just thought it was crazy. And I have no, I, I barely recall recall what I said. I gave him a fake number. Well, it technically was real, but not real here. No, our Ma Madison's been arrested. <sighs> we were, we were friends. We were friends in, in prison. Okay. And she was out on she was out on probation just trying just trying to fix her life and she did she she did something to help and that was illegal and well now she's been arrested for it. They're taking her back. Not if I have anything to say about it. I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna do everything I can. Try and make this right. I... Anything, maybe mind mind think... control, maybe. <laughs> I don't have that ability. I've been burnt by people before. Just... I don't want to burn someone else. Why are being burnt? She, <laughs> Molly's Molly's starting to panic a little bit. Like she's starting to breathe a little faster, and she says, <sighs> "She she had to leave her Pokemon behind, like." He's he's a Rotom. I have him with me right now. She, 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 she was. Okay, go to the officer. Go, go to whoever who's arresting her. Go after them, and put me onto them. Um, but if I do this, um, just uh, keep an eye out for Fabian for me if something goes wrong. <laughs> out of character, are they like? Is the lieutenant still in the vicinity, or do they? Yeah, he's still in the vicinity. You can, they're not moving very quickly. You know, Madison's taking her time. Yeah. Mm. Molly's going to say, listen, I, you're not going to do anything to get yourself in trouble too, are you? No. Of course not. Don't worry about it. This is lying. <laughs> I don't say that lying. Yeah. Molly's going to say, Okay, I'm trusting you, and she's going to run after the lieutenant. All right, you can run after the lieutenant. Mm -hmm. He'll notice that you're running towards him, and then he'll turn around with Madison. <laughs> Miss Moon, is there something else? And she'll she'll stop, and she'll say, "Yes, sir. Please, just here." And she hands him the phone. He take, looks at the O phone a little bit oddly, and then he puts it up to his ear, and he says. Lieutenant Jenny here. Who am I also speaking? You are speaking to someone who is going to make a confession. I falsified all my ID and information. Um, the young lady you have now with you, who I just learned of, is not involved at all. It was all me. Um, it appears that um, more of a rerouting um, sequences I've um, done and such must have been bounced off her um, systems and stuff. It was all me. Um... Miss Sinclair, you were not completely truthful to me before, and you understand that because of that is I have a very difficult time trusting you now as a consequence. I don't want other people suffering for things that I did. I did this. According to my investigations, that's not completely true, Miss Sinclair. Miss Rain was involved. The information that you gave me, the number that you gave me, was not a true phone number, which led me to become a lot more suspicious than I already was. 
perhaps if you were a little bit more truthful to me, this entire situation could have played out a lot differently. I'm a terrible person who stole someone's um, uh, um, computer details. I did it. I confess. Miss Sinclair, this is how I operate. I consider myself to be a relatively trusting person. I tend to trust people until they give me reason not to trust them. Currently, you and I are not in good terms, in terms of trust. I hope you understand that. I'm not just saying that to be spiteful to you. I'm just stating the facts here. Understand. And will me coming forward um, reduce her sentence? Will it do anything? Yes. Yes, it will. Okay, I'll come forward and cooperate fully. You can put me in a lie detector, get a psychic to read my mind, whatever is necessary. I don't want someone suffering, something I did. I'll tell you what, Miss Sinclair. If you come to the station willingly, and if we, uh, because if you are willing to prepare a statement of your confession, then what we can do is we can put you on probation. Are you willing to do that for Miss Rainier? If it went for her, my brother would be still living on the streets. So yes, she's a friend of mine. He says, I'm trying not to be the bad guy here. Really, I'm not Miss Sinclair. I know it sounds like I am being the bad guy, but I am trying to do things as best as I can. I understand. I'm sorry for the trouble you have got involved in. At some point, Miss Sinclair, if we're going to be continuing having this working relationship, you have to trust me a little bit more. And I'll try to trust you more. It's difficult to trust. Anyone. He says, I understand. Trust me. I've been there myself. Okay. I'll see you in the station. Um, tell Nassim sorry. Um, I never meant for this to happen. So, um, have a good day. You as well, Miss Sinclair. <laughs> Consequences. <laughs> there goes there's consequences to things you do. So uh, I did not intend for Madison to be jailed, but things that happened in previous sessions, it it had it led to, it had to lead to this. So but let's get let's let's move back to Cassie. So Cassie, this is what happened earlier that day. So we're going a little bit Same off, day. off. Same day. Okay. Earlier that day. So you are having your very first day at the um, Prism Labs in Saffron City. And this facility, I mean, it's like very well furnished, lots of natural lighting. Um, it is probably a dream job, at least especially for techies to have. And, um, you know, you have your own desk. And lab coat. You know, there's a really... Yeah, you have your own Prism Labs lab coat, yes. Um, they provide you with a workstation that has, you know, state-of-the-art equipment. You have your own, like, personal Prism Labs laptop and all that. You've got your ID card and everything. And as you're getting set up, um, a gentleman is going to um, come to your desk. Here we go. Hey. Dr. Richard Aspen. He comes up to your desk and he adjusts his glasses a little bit and... Uh, he says, Cassandra, surprise seeing you here. Yeah, so I guess at the time, oh, sorry? He says, he was a smile. Okay, I guess at the time she was just kind of like organizing her desk, you know, moving things about a little bit. Um, not noticing when he initially approached, but upon hearing his voice, you know, she certainly perked up and looked at him. Upon seeing him, you know, she'd smile. And it was actually a genuine one, you know, someone from her past kind of coming back. Yeah. So. Um, she'll stand up from desk and say, Oh, Richard, how are you doing? It's good to see you again. You as well, you as well, he says as he holds out his hand to shake. She'll grab it and shake and say, Oh, by the way, I, I hope it's all right calling you Richard. 
he smiles a little bit and he says, Richards works just fine. He says, we're colleagues now. I'm sure your father must be very proud. I, I certainly hope he is. How's your mother doing, by the way? Oh, she's, you know, she's doing well enough. It's good to hear. I have to say, I was very pleasantly surprised when I found your application on my desk. No, it just happened to be I was out of a job and I saw the, you know, the notice for it. It was, it was perfect timing. It seemed like something that I could definitely do. I didn't realize that you were in Saffron. Yeah, yeah, no, life just kind of pushed me that way. Well, I take hopefully you managed to avoid some of the excitement that we had here a few weeks ago over at the department store. And she'll have a bit of a weak smirk at that and say, well, as a matter of fact, guess what my last place of work was? He looks at your resume again. The Pokemart. Yep. Well. At least it looks like you managed to survive to tell the tale. Yes, if, if nothing else, life has been exciting lately. It says, I'm sorry to hear that uh, you probably have had a very uh, difficult, comp um, compromising uh, experience. She'll shrug a little and say, I've, I've had a good support group, and I definitely got off a lot better than other people, so I'm going to count my blessings on this one. He will nod and smile. And uh, he says, Well, Cassandra, you, um, if you need anything, just please let us know. Um, we would like to get you ramped up and ready to get set to work right away. I was thinking of placing you onto the Mega Evolution team, if you think that would be interesting for you. Yeah, that sounds fine. Very well, he says. Um, your father, I believe, himself was actually looking into this um, prior to his death. Yeah, and she, she did seem a little hesitant, but, you know, she's trying to kind of just shrug it off, and so she'll, she'll just nod at that comment. He left us very early, but while he was here, he was a pioneer in the evolutionary field. One of the things that he was actually trying to study up is Mega Evolution. Um, he, it wasn't his main focus, but I know that um, there were some things he was looking into in terms of making Mega Evolution more permanent instead of a temporary state for Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so I imagine, of course, you know, I'll be able to catch up and everything course. He says, you should have all of the resources at your fingertips. Uh, if you need anything, just look for me at my office. Perfect. Thank you. You'll nod. And you can get yourself settled. And it's really nice. It's a cushy job. It's a really nice cushy job. Uh, the benefits are right out of the wazoo. Plenty of the cafeteria is completely free. It's a buffet style. You just go in, <laughs> you grab whatever you want. Mm -hmm. This is like the Google like one of the <laughs> like one of the best places to work in the country. It's like it's like the Google basically, and um, you know, and they have like chefs all around, all throughout the day, like making food for you at the cafeteria. And, um, plate, there's like even nap rooms where you can nap in. You can basically live here if you really want. To. <laughs> but, but that's because they do that so that they can keep you here and make you work 24/7. So that's I was gonna say, that's a lot like the Rocket Headquarters. It was super nice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything in particular that you're gonna do during your first day that I need to know about other than the regular getting yourself settled and stuff? I know she would, she would devote most of her time, unless, you know, people wanted to chat, of course. Uh, she'd devote most of her time to studying. So, you know, taking like, seeing what um, the different kind of branches within that facility, you know, have been looking into lately, um, focusing especially on the mega evolutions because that's what she was assigned to. But, um, yeah. you know, she'd want to know what, what the other scientists or whatnot were up to. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of branches and the thing with Prism Labs is that um, depending on what department you're in, you all are only provided access to information on a need to know basis. So there is, at least, especially for you being an intern, you don't really get to have access to any of that. That's fair. No, I had imagined there would only be that. like 
the basic kind of like subject headings of anything. Right. You would probably Some need somebody with better hacking skills to do that. <laughs> I don't know if you have anyone like that anymore to do that. For, anymore. But. <laughs> so. No, she All right. spends most of it in Mega Evolution. She, like, you know, even take the laptop, you know, while she's eating or whatever, but. Yeah. So Mega Evolution, for those of you who are not familiar with the Pokemon universe, most Pokemon have three evolutionary forms, their base form, second of, like, first evolution, second evolution. They recently came out with a Mega Evolution um, with one of the more recent generations, and the Mega Evolution is very temporary. There's, like, a, a wristwatch or something that you activate, and it allows the Pokemon to Mega Evolve into a fourth form. It's basically, basically. digivolving. It's basically digivolving, yes. <laughs> um, and um, but it's only temporary during that battle, and then they'll go back into their third evolutionary form. So it looks like Prism Labs is trying to look for ways that they can maintain a Pokemon's mega evolution so that it's more permanent. Mm -hmm. Question. Obviously, there's a lot of controversy over the ethic, ethic, ethicness because there's always ethic conversation like should i know we can do that but should we do that Jurassic always, Park. Yes. <laughs> yes what is your question tiffany okay uh is it only veiled pokemon that have three evolutions because lux has no evolution it only has two no it is not yes yeah, so like a palm for example has one and it yeah okay wait no a palm can evolve once into ambipom and also, or, and also, since we haven't really done anything with Chase, I kind of do, just to even things out, I do want to do some role-playing with Chase. Can we actually role-play Chase doing the cobblestone thing with the food that he got from Felicity? Sure. All right. Sure. So, Chase, you and Lux will go to um, where you know Cobblestone Pete normally is, and he's... Uh, at a dumpster that he normally looks for food for breakfast, and he seems to have pulled out some sort of bag um, that uh, looks like he pulls out like a half-eaten bagel sandwich that he starts munching on. Cobblestone. Cobblestone. Oh! Chase! Good to see you! Good morning! I think it's gonna be very good to see me. Put that other stuff down, man. I got you something good here. And he lifts up the bag. He smells something. That smells. Oh, where did you get this? Don't tell me somebody threw away this perfectly no, good food. No, I came by a little bit of uh, money, so I, I got us something good to eat today. I already ate mine. Sorry, I couldn't wait, man. But uh, Lux was hungry. I was hungry. But I figure uh, you and uh, Gobblestone there are looking for something to eat, so... There you go, man. This is a whole day's worth of food, baby. This is like you, you, you want to. You, you don't even have to eat tomorrow. I, you just gotta eat this whole stack here. I don't know what to say. This is like this is like Christmas. <laughs> he gives him the bag and is like, "Well, ho ho ho." This <laughs> is. He's. You mean ho o oh, ho o? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, cobblestone takes the bag and he opens it up and he. Starts rummaging through it, and and uh, he says, oh, "Chase, yours. You have a heart of gold. Do you know that?" I gotta, I gotta balance things out in life, you know. First, you rescue my pack. Now you give me this feast. I don't know if I can ever live old enough to repay you for any of this. Live as lo live as old as you can live, my friend. Luck, uh, Lux Gobblestone is going to go over to. Um, he's going to walk over to the. Um, to the pack and he's going to start sniffing and he's going to start you know gorging on some of the scrambled eggs oh yes this is this is good stuff yes he says yeah. Lux is going to hop down and have Chase's hoodie walk over it was amazing oh he says Lux how are you doing yeah, I'm good Chase keeps doing troubling things but eh, you got to keep your humans safe he, he will he will nod as he continues to voraciously consume this. She says, is this going to be a regular thing? Please tell me this is going to be a regular feast. <laughs> I don't think so, but we'll see. He, he says, 
I've noticed that you've been playing nice with the lady at the, at the, at the, at the diner. Maybe you can, I don't know, bat your eyelashes at her and <laughs> give him a little bit of a, I don't know, put you in a face or something. I think Chase would have better luck with that. I don't think Chase is I, looking to have an egg, so... I don't think most humans find me adorably cute enough to give me free food. What's cute to one person might be hideous to another. Should know this one Pokemon I met, big pile of goop called Ew. Owner freaking adores him, he's a grimer. Um, he says, oh... Ooh, a Grimer. A poison Pokemon. Yeah. Mm. That he's nice for hatchling. I don't really particularly care much for them po poison types. <sighs> he's nice kid. Um, he says, if you say so. A lot of people seem to be scared of the psychics, but poisons... I think poison's the one you need to look out for. They can kill you from the inside out without you even knowing it. Thinks about that for a few minutes, like, just like hogs. <laughs> um, he says, I'm just trying to look out for your safety there, that's all. Just looking out for you. And he comes to use gobbling more of the food. Um... Cobblestone Pete's gonna sit down again, and he's, uh, after he's eaten his meal, very satisfied to himself. Says, wow, I haven't eaten like that in, I can't even remember when. I can't say it's gonna be common, but I'd like to think that I've gotten some good favors. I got us in a good place, Cobblestone, so as long as you're still around to talk to me, I will do what I can to feed you. He says... Well, I know that I'm doing great. How about yourself? You doing all right for yourself there, Chase? He lifts up his arms. He's, got, he's probably still got sunburns. He, he was at the hospital, so some of them are healed up. And he's like, and there's writing all over him at yeah. this point, more than often, more than, more than regular. He's like, I, you know, I've, I've been better, but I, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty revived this morning, actually. I had, some, had myself some good sleep. He, uh, he, he, he nods a, a bit, and uh, he says, well, he says, I hope you know that if there's anything that I can help you with, physically, emotionally, psychologically, I've been around for a number of years. I may not look like much, but I know that I'm a very good listener, and I've seen a lot, I've heard a lot. Mostly because I'm a good observer during these times. People don't seem to notice people like us very much. So on that topic, maybe I will ask a favor from you there, Cobblestone. I was wondering if sure. you could hang out by the station for me over the next few weeks. Just maybe, maybe just get a look at the comings and goings of a particular lieutenant with blue hair. Pretty easy to find. He's a male Jenny. I was gonna say, this, you want me to hang out and keep an eye on the station with all those beautiful women coming in and out? Of course I would be there, but I'm a little disappointed that all you want me to do is look at the only male Jenny there. You can look at all of them, just pay extra attention to the Jen. I, I would like to, I hate to ask this because it's sort of sketch, but if you could find out where he lives. You want me to find out where the isn't he one of the higher up Jennies? Yeah, but he's cool. <laughs> he says he he takes a he takes and gives you a, a little bit of a crooked like a little bit of a crooked uh, head tilt, and he says, "Are you trying to find out where he lives because you like the fella?" I don't know about like the fella. I don't hate the fella. Just want to check up on him. I'm not judging if you do, though. He says, that's perfectly fine by me. <laughs> I don't know if it'll go into that direction there, Cobblestone, but... <laughs> All right. I'm glad for your support. 
All I'm saying, you're a man of mystery and nothing surprises me about you anymore. <laughs> In this world, I don't think anything will surprise me anymore. I don't know if I know who I am enough to tell you that he's not an interested, in, interesting individual for me. All right. Well, it's the least I can do after giving me this feast. You know, I'll look at all of the, look at any and follow any of those police officers you want. But you know, maybe next time, if you want one of the female Jennies for me to follow and find out where they live, I won't say no to that either. All right. You know what? As a bonus, I do have a female Jenny for you to Liz uh, look after. I don't know if I, I need you to see where she lives, because that'll just be creepy. But <laughs> there's a there's a tra there's a, a linguist in there. She's a, a pretty young officer in training. Uh, goes by the name of Genev. Uh, sorry, what was it? Out of character, Genevieve. Gen Genova. Nevi. Gen Nevi. It's Genevra, yeah. but Nevi. Yeah. Genevra. How young are we talking here? What's that? <laughs> How young are we talking here? <laughs> Not that young. Is I mean, safe enough to look at there, cobblestones. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know. He says, "I don't want to. I don't want to come off as some sort of a creepy pervert." Now, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> don't draw that much attention to yourself. Just if you can, okay. just just see if she's if she's up to any trouble or if she just uh, you know, don't go too. Uh, just focus on the lieutenant. If you're gonna get in trouble, get in trouble because you're checking out after him. All right, this I can do for you, Chase. This I can do. Me and Gobblestone here are on the case. <laughs> Great. I love it. And he'll nod. Okay. So, is there anything else that's pressing that you need to absolutely roleplay before the end of the two-week jump? Not roleplay, just check in real quick. Sure. Uh, Tiffany would like to ask Felicity if it'd be okay if she stayed with her the three days of the comp uh, day before competition, day of competition, day after. Yeah, she'll say yeah, absolutely. Okay. Didn't think it'd be an issue, just covering bases. Also, she would have felt chased on what's going on with the contest. Just, you know, the reason why we did invite Lux, it's not that we don't like you, but... Yes. Illegal. Makes sense to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. And what about Noir going to the station and everything? Yes. Noir can definitely go to the station before we have the... Before we do the jump. So... Noir, you're going to come oh. to the station. We're not going to actually role play this, but we're just going, well, we'll role play one portion. So basically, because you technically also committed something illegal by getting all of these fake identifications made, um, they're... <sighs> Lieutenant Jenny has, has pulled some strings, even though he probably shouldn't, but he did. He's pulling some strings to let you off with a fine. Um, He'll, he'll, he'll lay off with a fine um, that basically cuts into a lot of your savings, but it's either that or you go to jail. He was able to negotiate the fine down to as low as possible. So essentially, you you basically will lose the, all of the extra tips that, that um, I had you have. So that will have to have to have to leave you in your that will have to go away from your possession. All the tips that we just had. Okay. Well, since the reward money, <laughs> which is gone now, um, and the um, the tip money, she actually got up to a thousand. Now it's <laughs> oh. so. Can you pay it then? Yeah, you can pay the, um, the fine. All right. Is it possible to like get <laughs> Madison off free at any at possibly? Uh, I'm gonna get to that. So, okay. so, because so right now, you, basically, you're now currently on probation, um, which means that uh, if as long as no other incidents, illegal incidents occur, you're fine. If it, if you do get involved in anything illegal, then the, the lieutenant Jenny has no other choice but to escalate it up, and you might have to look into serving some time. So, um, the last thing that Kyle is going to say is, Miss Noir, one more thing. Miss Rainier requested to speak to you privately, and I told her that I would only allow her to do so with your permission. I am fully help, happy to speak with her. Um, is, is this conversation going to be recorded or watched? 
he says uh, it is at, at minimum going to be watched. Okay. I have no reason to necessarily have it. Uh, he says, I don't have personally any reason to record it. I agreed to a private conversation, but we're at least going to watch to make sure that you both are safe. Of course. Okay. You'll be taken into a room and um, you're going to see that Madison is going to be like, she's handcuffed to a desk right there. And she's not moving and she's, you know, she's wearing like an orange jumpsuit right now. And she has a very like contempt look on her face when you come in. Yeah. Noel's kind of look like she hasn't slept in days. <laughs> like, she's just like... She's going to go, um, um, did you get, get, did you get off? Did I do enough? She, she says, the lieutenant said that she's working on it. I don't know yet what my fate, what my fate is going to be. No, kind of like, um, um, point, like points at the cameras. And then like, and then taps her pin, like trying to like skewer, tapping her pin, um, Mm -hmm. Like go, kind of like suddenly get across. I can talk to you in your mind. I can't hear. She, when you say that, she sort of like her, no, no, her face kind, it, of, kind of kind of like a little bit. Oh, just, so she, are, you are psionically telling her, right? Yeah, or, like she tells her these things to, to her. It's like I can let them not hear. I can say I can. This is telepathic. I can say that I coerced you. That you were threatened that you had to do it against your own, own will. She, when you, when you, when you um, try to contact her telepathically, you get a sense of sudden fear in her, in her head. And you can, you can hear some surface thoughts saying like, oh my God, she's reading my mind. Oh my God, she's talking to me through her mind. You, you can tell that she is, she doesn't, isn't trust, trusting of psychics. And, and she says, I don't understand. She shouldn't be able to do this. She's got, she's only got I, a yellow pin unless she's lying about that too. I, I, like she's only sending out her thoughts. She's not reading thoughts. She's not entering Madison's Well, she mouth. doesn't know that. She doesn't know that. Um, she kind of like sends that across. It's like, I'm not reading your thoughts. I'm just sending my thoughts to you. That's do you say that verbally or through telepathy? Telepathy. She says, you can hear um, thoughts go back, say, get out of my head, get out of my head, you freak. She says, I can talk perfectly normal, thank you very much. Okay. Why did you do it? I coerced you, obviously, into um, writing those ideas, it was... You didn't want to do it, obviously. Um, it was. Um, I'm, I obviously coerced you into doing it, forced you to do it. I'm sorry you weren't got involved in my situation. I'm very good at stuffing up whatever I touch. So, sorry. You ruined my life, she said. Too. She says, I guess it doesn't matter really at this point. I kind of like tears up. I'm crying now. <laughs> Gosh. Uh. She says, I just hope that next time when somebody tries to help you and put themselves on the line that you don't screw them over. I, I didn't mean to screw you over. I tried to fix things. But when I fix things, I make them worse. So I'm, I'm so sorry. She, she, she will, um, she will, uh, uh, 
start to tear up a little bit and then she'll look up at the camera and say, I'm done talking. I don't want to talk to her anymore. And with that, the door will open and the lieutenant will like, place a hand gently on your shoulder and say, uh, Miss Sinclair, I think we need to, I think we're done here. Yeah. She didn't want to make the ID. Uh, seriously, she didn't want to make the ID, so I forced her. Um, she shouldn't get fined for um, doing something to protect herself. Can you trust in me now, Miss Sinclair? I can't trust anyone. It doesn't end well. Ever. Let's get you out, Miss Sinclair. And he will escort you he will escort you out of the station. I will be in touch, he says. Are you going to be all right getting back home? Yeah, of course. Have a good day. And she kind of like, cleans herself up and acts like nothing ever happened. He's going to say, Miss Sinclair, take care of yourself, at least for your brother's sake. Of course. And then he will nod. Okay. That night, this is the night before Tiffany is going to go do her audition for the her position. At least enter into the Saffron City Pokemon Center. So that night before, you guys will once again come together into your dream zone area. So, do you guys do any conversing at all? Chase immediately goes to the red door, takes off his sweatshirt, sits in the sandbox, doesn't talk to anyone else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He sure, he sure loves that memory, doesn't he? What's the significance of it? <sighs> well, um... Long story short, it's where we first met. Aww. We were kids, like... I... The day I arrived at the orphanage, you know, Chase was there, and... I remember I sat at that sandbox right over there, and... Some people came over, and they started bothering me, and then Chase came over, and took care of them. Aww. So even as a kid, he was like that. <sighs> yeah. It's funny. It's funny what a small world it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, out of character, is this the first time Tiffany's heard anything about Molly and Chase being orphans? Maybe? Maybe. I, I think it I is. Think so. Okay. I think so. Well, cool. like, right. Chase, Chase and Molly have talked privately about it, but I don't think they yeah. ever mentioned it. Yeah, but, you know, Tiffany's been in and out of your life this week, or the last two weeks with, okay, does this fit your crowbat? What does your crowbat think about this color? <laughs> have you been feeding him the poppins? Very important. <laughs> She's like, yes, 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 I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Molly. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, whatever happened to your foster family? <sighs> such a, such a stupid thing, really. I... <sighs> you know, when, <clears throat> when you're young and you're scared, you do stupid things. You know that, right? You're better than most. This is gonna sound really silly to you, I'm sure, but it took me a long time to open up to them. When I finally started to, I overheard, I overheard a, I overheard them on the phone 
and it sounded like it sounded like social services was getting ready to come and take me away again. And well, I I panicked. I didn't want to go through that whole process again of trying to trust people, trust another set of foster parents after after finally finding them. They they were the only ones who ever treated me well. I decided I wanted to take control of my own life. And so I just, I ran away. Hmm, Smitty. And Cassie slowly nods. Such a, such a stupid thing. I, I well, people are good at laying, you down, laying other people down, so. Um, you shouldn't feel bad about not trusting them. I mean, do you regret running away? Like, do you wish they'd found you? Every day. I just... I wonder... I Sometimes I think about how they must feel. I, I never contacted them again because I don't know how to. And also... Do you know their names? I know their names, yes. Okay. When I wake up, I can try doing some searches. Hmm. If you even... Molly starts to shake at that. Like, she's really, she's really torn about that. She says, well, okay, um, if if you want to try, you can, but... If you yeah. don't want me to, if, it's okay, sweetie. It's really what you want. No, I, I, I want to. It's just... It's, it's, it's complicated. It's very complicated. I can but, imagine. But at any rate, at any rate, yes. I regret it very much. It was a stupid thing. I panicked and I ran and I think I think I hurt them a lot. Chase overhears the and I run away and he'll get back up. He'll leave his sweatshirt at the sandbox and he'll walk back to the group. And he approaches Molly and he says, Sometimes we have to run away in order to find the truth. And this isn't about finding the truth of how your parents feel, but finding out more about yourself so that you can so that you can uh, I think you need to heal yourself so that you can move on with life and I mean in in my in my memory of you Molly you were dead so what I'm sorry what I was dead and Chase looks back at the sandbox. All 12 of them were dead. And he lifts up his shirt to show the names that, that look like squiggly marks in the dream world. That's grim. Yeah. So I'd say there's a lot more going on here. And we need to be thankful for some of the opportunities that are presented to us. Yeah. So if uh, Tiffany wants to look into this for you, I, I'd say let her and just go with the flow. Uh, but Chase, um, you said all 12 of them? All 12 of whom? It looks oh, back you remember the playground. The... All 12 of the orphans. The kids. Well, just Jeff everyone Lyle. at your orphanage? <clears throat> That's what, that's what my memory is. Jet Black and you know everyone else, they're all dead in your memory? That's how I remember it. And I've been trying to find answers for why that happened and why I was left alive, how I got away, who's hiding the information. Well, if sure. Molly turned out to be alive, have you actually confirmed that anyone else was actually dead? I know that there's one more person that's not actually dead. 
makes three of us that somehow survive this. But no confirmed Please. deaths. No confirmed deaths. Just mysterious disappearances, or I just don't remember. Who's the other person? Who's the other one? Yeah. Uh. Do you want to know? Well, yeah. I mean, if if we all went through something, if if you went through something mysterious and we're all dead in your memory, then yeah, I'd I'd like to know what happened or who else is involved. So he looks at the blue door. This is Jet Black. Jet Black is alive. Jet Black is alive. Huh. Lieutenant Jenning. Lieutenant do Jenny. The, do you remember Jet Black being Lieutenant Jenning? Jenny? Mm-hmm. Molly looks at the sandbox again and she says, The bully who the, the bully at the sandbox became a lieutenant of the police force. You guys were in the same orphanage as the lieutenant. In a different reality, I think. I don't think that lieutenant's Jet Black, but that lieutenant is Jet Black. But he's not. But Jet he's Black. not Jet Black. But he is Jet Black. Hey Chase. Who's... In your memory, was what's the as Giotto? <laughs> uh, out of character. What does he know of? Uh, what's gone down in the last 10 years because that would have been four years after or something. Yeah, that would have been four years after. So at the time, Johto, well, back when you were at the orphanage, Johto was still a thriving Mm -hmm. region. And then 10 years ago, it fell. So it would have been 14 and probably on the streets already, actually. Yeah. (laughs) I don't remember. I've always been in this city. Okay. Since getting away. I heard news about it growing up. Alright. Is there another reality? I know a few things about other realities. That only started to come to mind when I met you, Noir. And I learned who you were, or who you weren't, or who you are in this world. There's still another one out there of you. Because you're not from here. Sorry, what? Uh, yeah. Does anyone else have any more secrets? Come on. Yeah, I feel like we weren't part of this conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Just watch out for any devil Pokemon. If they come, just blame me. For the record, hello everyone. Uh, My name is Cassie. I have a job at Prism Labs now. Sorry, Noir, what was this about another world? <laughs> oh, you got the job! Congratulations! Hugs and Cassie. Yeah. <laughs> Stepping out of character, that was talked about, I think, in some in an earlier episode, right? Where Noir kind of suggested or hinted that the hoopla thing she wasn't around. Cassie and Tiffany. A lot of leaps there. <laughs> <laughs> Cassie and Tiffany, though, were, yeah, looking into the psychics, so they weren't part of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have we heard back this, from the psychics? That's right, that scene. <laughs> yeah. They haven't had their monthly meeting yet. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but so they didn't know about this dimension. <laughs> mm, yeah. That's fine. Well played. They don't know about the meeting thing yet, so we're cool. Mm-hmm. We got secrets, too. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Moving on. Are you going to those secrets? I only find myself surprised as why am I with this group? Everyone else's life seems way more complex than mine. I think if you're part of this group, you're about to find out that your life is not so simple. Actually, I was was wondering about that, if you want to chat about that a little bit. I mean, we've been meeting here every night now, right? Just I assume after everyone went to bed? More or less. Well, what about the very first time? The very first time, we kind of just all collapsed where we were standing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why do we get away until we're comfy now? You know? We proved our metal? I don't know. 
I mean, I have my own theories. But... I could yes, do I with. Do. I, I could do with fewer mysterious ways and more just straight answers. <laughs> yeah, God's not good mm-hmm. So answers aren't always clear, and he'll look down at his arms again and see the squiggly marks that are unreadable. And he's like, sometimes even when you write things down, the message isn't clear. But if you look at them long enough, I think they'll start making sense. I believe mm-hmm. they will start making sense. Cassie starts face. to stare at Chase. <laughs> Awkward silence for five minutes. <laughs> 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 I figure if you just look at them long enough, they'll start to make sense. <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> They're not making sense right now. I, I see. <laughs> Still a mystery. <laughs> So, Chase, uh, what's this orphanage you were call, um, called? It was the Whitestone Orphanage. <laughs> Whitestone Orphanage of Garalamo Emiliani. It was, a, it was an orphanage that existed and now it doesn't seem to exist. It's been covered up or it doesn't exist in this world, which means I'm not from this world. So where am I from and who am I and all those fun questions. <sighs> I figured you were the kind of person who would make up who you are. You know, you decide your own fate and all that. And that's why I don't know if I've made all of this up. It could be just one fabricated story. Out of character in, like, would Molly know if the orphanage exists or not? Because she does remember it. Uh, yeah, you would. The orphanage, you know that the orphanage, um was closed down for reasons you never learned because mm-hmm. I mean you were just a little kid at the time so she, you know that the order probably didn't shut care down. at the time you didn't really care much at the time of the details <laughs> as far as you know it existed mm-hmm. as far as you know um, yeah, Whitestone Whitestone was shut down a few a number of years ago but I don't I don't know why I never understood why I never really cared until now And yours would have been a different orphanage, though, because you don't remember what I remember. So I think mm-hmm. I, my problem is I keep questioning myself, and I I don't I don't know if I'm a reliable narrator in this entire life. There was this, there was one person I knew. Her name was Mary Graffenheimer. Mary Graffenheimer. I used to call her Polly. Uh, it was always Polly and Molly, and I mean both those names mean Mary at the end of the day. But she was a prolific writer, and she, she always, always telling lies and always fabricating these wonderful tales about the other kids in the orphanage. And which, I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe part of her. I carry part of her, and I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense. I don't know if I'm making sense to myself or anybody else. But in here, I feel like I make the most sense ever. Is there some from um, our character? Is there some type of role I can make to see if I ever heard of a, like a, a bunch of kids dying at Whitestone Orphanage in my world? I would like to do this Go too. Go ahead. What, what are we rolling? A that would be a. Is there like a local general movie? education? Yeah, yeah, I guess general education. Sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> eh? <laughs> You may have heard, uh, Cassie, about some orphanage. Maybe you read a maybe you read an article about it um, at some point, and um, it was it was shut down uh, because uh, the kids, uh, several kids, died in a fire at the orphanage. Do I remember like how many years ago that incident was? Or at least how many years ago, maybe I looked, like, read about it? Uh, it occurred approximately the same time that both Chase and Molly remember the orphanage shutting down. Essentially, when Molly escaped and whenever, uh, 
Chase remembers his incident. Okay. His incident with the with the kids dying. So I guess they all kind of have their little group think, and her brow furrows a bit and says, "She says, actually, I do remember reading about some incident or other, an orphanage that caught fire or something like that. Is that what you remember?" I don't remember. I, I've, I'm literally I'm losing years here. Well, I mean, the police definitely got shut down after kids died from it. Chase, maybe... I, I know I know it's hard for you to remember, but... You, you came to me one night and you said... You said, we have to get out of here. And... And you... We made a promise to meet at a place at a sandbox there for you for two days and you didn't come like maybe maybe because you told me maybe that's why I'm still alive maybe you helped me escape the fire how would he have known about the fire good question all I'm saying is that he might have maybe he alerted other kids and he just doesn't remember it the trauma Maybe that's maybe that's how the others maybe that's how the others are still alive and maybe that's why he doesn't remember. I would I would like to think that. I, I know that Kyle Jenny he never went to our orphanage. That's how this all breaks down for me, Molly. But you said that he was jet black. I asked him if he remembered the orphanage. He he never went to this orphanage. No, he has no like you do. More, more correctly, just to correct you out of character, he says he doesn't remember much about his past. So there's a lot of gaps in his memory. Chase did ask him if he recognized the name at least, right? I recall it at I least thought, so, but, but yeah. there could be a, a he... mix of... Yeah, I think he probably just doesn't quite... I think that might be a detail he doesn't remember. There's a lot about his. He's, I think what he one of the things he said was along the lines of there's a big giant gap in his memory back in the day, and he hasn't been able to figure out why. There's a big gap in his memory. But he does recall getting raised at a different one at some point, getting out and then becoming. He's other. aware that he's adopted. He doesn't remember he's Chase, aware. if I remember that correctly. He doesn't remember Chase. The event in the sandbox. It doesn't seem like he remembers the event with the sandbox. Yeah, that's explainable, though. There's a lot of stuff that happens in childhood you don't remember. Or maybe another person really remembers and you don't. Well, especially yes. with something tragic like that. Well, the sandbox, not the orphanage burning down. Yeah, hopefully that's something you remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it burning down. Well, I mean, some people would block something like that out, you know? Would some people block out who their parents were? I mean, given the right circumstances, yeah. I don't remember anything before age of 10. Not a single memory, including who my parents were and what my name is. So is the earliest you remember being at the orphanage? I remember being at the orphanage 